is the global law program of uh, the Sao Paulo Law School of FGV. And uh, we're happy to have with us today Professor Wei Tseng Chen from the National University of Singapore. Professor Chen, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you today. for having me here. It's a pleasure. Uh, Professor Chen is going to talk to us about his uh, course, the course that he has, he, he has been teaching at the Global Law Pro Program for the past week about law and development in China. Professor Chen, can you tell us a little bit about your course? This is an interesting course, because uh, in, in Singapore, I talk about law and business in greater China, but I mm -hmm. suppose students here will be more interested uh, in learning about the big picture. So we're talking mm -hmm. about the law and development in China. Mm -hmm. So what is law and development? I asked my students uh, in the first lecture. Okay. And they say, well, professor, it's about poverty how to leave people out of the poverty, and some, th um, some say it's about corruption, you know, how to deal with the rampant corruption in developing country. I think the, all these answers are valid. Uh, personally, I think law and development uh, is to deal with a number of legal institutions mm -hmm. that are relevant to economic development. Right? So we are concerned about, well, what kind of institutions are we talking about? Sure. Right? and uh, property, contract, taxation, mm -hmm. or constitutional law, mm -hmm. right? And what are the functions of these institutions? And which one is more important for developing countries? How to reform them, right? What if we don't have one or two uh, of these institutions? How can we create these institutions? What are the social conditions, political conditions to support these com uh, institutions? So all these questions are included in my, in my lectures. We mm -hmm. spent uh, the first lecture talking about the general theories, mm -hmm. and then we move on uh, to investigate uh, a number of key institutions, mm -hmm. including property rights, contract, mm -hmm. tax, financial mm -hmm. uh, institutions. And then in the last lecture, we come back to answer uh, the general questions again. So that that is pretty much I cover in my five lectures. That sounds very interesting. And how did the students react to those, uh, to this approach uh, on law and development? It, it, they they impress me. I, really? I, I I'm so envy you guys. You know, <laughs> having uh, these brilliant students, uh, they are very eager to learn more about uh, the theories mm -hmm. and the interesting stories uh, regarding law and development in China. I think they can think out of the mm -hmm. box. Uh, at the same time, uh, they keep comparing Brazil with China. That's fascinating. I learned a lot from them as well. Uh, at the end of the day, I guess they know themselves better uh, by comparing Brazil with China uh, as well. But uh, that must be also a challenge for you, right? How to, how to present China and uh, Chinese law, and especially this very uh, central key institutions, but also very um, institutions that uh, generate a lot of discussion, mm -hmm. uh, not only in the legal field, but also in the public uh, opinion in general. So how do, you, how, how do you deal, how do you cope with this challenge of uh, presenting Chinese law within this framework of law and development to Brazilian students who, uh, as a rule, don't have any don't have, didn't, are not familiar with Chinese mm -hmm. law before that. That's very important for me because we are, I'm teaching in the evening. So <laughs> my top priority is to yeah. keep students awake, you know, <laughs> don't sleep. Yeah. So before I come to Brazil, I actually did a little bit research uh, yeah. on YouTube. I, I found mm -hmm. many interesting uh, documentary films. Mm -hmm. I find the most interesting uh, YouTube clips. Mm -hmm. uh, I show them. Right, so instead Keeps of about China. Yeah, about China. Mm. So we talk about uh, when we talk about properties, right, there's a fascinating documentary film about the ghost towns in China mm. uh, as a result of the overheating real estate mm -hmm. department. Right? So I show the video clip mm. for them and they are they, they're surprised, mm -hmm. you know, because when we see when we when we you know hear about the, the term ghost towns, we think you know it's like a tiny houses haunted by the ghost. Mm. It's not the case. It's a huge city, but it's empty, right? Nobody, no resident, uh, no business out there. So that video clip, uh, you know, sparked a discussion for nearly 30 minutes. So I guess that's about the teaching methodology 
you know, we engaged uh, in these lectures. No, that's very important. And I think that must be also, must have been a very interesting experience for you to compare your experience in Singapore and in Asia in general with Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. Not only in the classroom, classroom but also while uh, living here in Sao Paulo for the past week. Were you able to, to draw any comparisons that you might uh, think it would be interesting to mention? There are many interesting comparisons. Uh, I guess I still have to learn more about Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what is fascinating is I discover, uh, well, China, Brazil, you know, both are great, impressive, huge uh, emerging market, mm -hmm. right? uh, facing similar issues similar challenges, uh, but at the same time they have different social and political conditions. So for me as a scholar, it's fascinating to see how these similarities and differences uh, have been translated into different institutional outcomes. Right? I remember we talked about this, uh, the sushi <laughs> in Brazil. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see the difference, how you guys you know, eat sushi in Brazil. Uh, in Brazil, I discover you know, you serve sushi uh, together with cream cheese. <laughs> in Asia, we eat sushi with wasabi. Right? So mm. they look identical, mm. they share the same name, but the tastes are very different. Uh, similarly, the, some legal institutions, banking institutions, you know, property rights, uh, well, they look similar, but I found the functions of these institutions are very different uh, in Brazilian and Chinese context. So these are something I have learned. Uh, mm -hmm. I wish I can continue to learn more about. And, I, and I, uh, well, during our conversations, uh, I've noticed that this functional approach to comparative law is very important to you. Um, how far do you think that this, uh, this could be a, pro a very productive way of looking and comparing legal institutions, not only between, say, Brazil and China, but also uh, as, a, as a method for comparative law in general? This is important uh, because we don't want to be a, a doctrinal uh, focus uh, or doctrinal only oriented lawyers, uh, especially in the context of law and development. Right? We, we have uh, the very similar uh, institution, say banking system, but in Brazil, uh, the banking ser system serves as a, a mechanism for the government to allocate the resources, right? To, big enterprises, small enterprises, state-owned enterprises. It's very different from the commercial banks that we are familiar with in the Western context. But there are some special functions uh, that these big banks serve in Brazilian context. So the functions are more important than the form. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I think it's necessary to engage in this functionalist approach mm -hmm. to no, study that law and development. Sounds very reasonable. And uh, uh, maybe drawing on that, could you talk a little bit more about your research agenda for the next years? What interests you and uh, what possible uh, subjects you would, uh, you, will, you will work on that uh, Brazilian scholars also might be interested in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm doing uh, some uh, uh, R&B internationalization mm -hmm. project. Uh, as well as uh, some domestic banking reform you know, in the face of the globalized uh, regulatory changes. But from the trip uh, in Brazil, I really wish I would be able to uh, broaden my horizon, mm -hmm. broaden my research and writings, mm -hmm. and at some point to include uh, Brazil. Uh, as I say, both countries share very similar social and economic conditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, but how do they deal with their differences? How these differences has been reflected in the legal institutions? Uh, I guess at the end of the day, Brazil and China are the two giant pieces in the law and development jigsaw pieces. Right? No one can ignore them. So I hope I will be able to continue uh, to study about Brazil and to include Brazil into this comparative law and development project. I think we all hope that as well. Professor Chen, uh, thank you for your interview. Thank you th for being here with us. And we look forward to reading your research uh, on this very interesting comparative uh, 
lot of topics. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for much. hosting me. You know, thanks for HGV's hospitality. You know, I really pleasure. enjoy my time here. It was our pleasure. Thank you.